Greetings everybody. All right, it's this time of the year. This is when the uh, the tubers or the roots of the uh, snake root plant are pretty much at their biggest. Um, this is a uh, beginning of April here in the south. Um, let me have a close up here what they look like. Okay, they're about like a foot to like two feet, th maybe three feet. They get taller when they um when there's less sun they um they itiolate <laughs> I think that's the word they become like tall and lanky trying to find the light okay let me show you here what, what we're going to be doing we're going to be uh digging Okay, let's see here. See if I can get closer. Um, closer up here. I've already made a video on this here. Uh, that's why they're called snake roots, right? Because they uh, kind of look like the tail of a snake. Now, you don't have to, uh, if you find the right spot, there's a uh, quite a lot of them, but um, if you if you don't go at the right time, they're, they're they're smaller. You see, like this one here. But if you go at the right time, they get like maybe this big. They could get a little bit bigger sometimes. Okay. So I'm going to uh, continue digging this patch here. And then I'm going to show you one of the things you could do to prepare them um, for nourishment, okay, for food. So I'll be I'll be back uh, on the other side. Okay, here we are. Now, what do we have here? We have our snake root. And as you see, I just washed it with the uh, with the garden uh, hose. I mean, that's been running pretty much all day, so it's not, uh, I'm not really contaminating them because there's a stream of water, but in any event, uh, we're going to be fermenting them, so I have here some uh, clean well water. It comes from a uh, artesian, uh, no, a well um, on an organic farm. So, uh, and it's a, a clay soil. It's like very, very uh, deep clay. So the water is fi is filtered. If it, if anything should be uh, there should be any uh, surface contamination, which there's not, but it's just good water. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because you can't use 
tap water because t the city water has uh, a lot of uh, nasty chemicals in there and uh, some of the chemicals like the chlorine is uh, will kill the bacteria and fermentation requires growing bacteria so we're trying to grow bacteria now what does this taste like just raw like this here let me let me taste it and tell you right now <laughs> it's very crunchy tastes almost like a radish but a very weak tasting radish okay like radishes are usually can be quite strong tasting you know like this kind of like the mustard you know that that spicy type of mustard strong in your nose you know well these are very weak they have just it's like a they have a taste but it's like a very it's not strong at all but so I've done I've fermented these two years ago and last year I didn't do it and this year I promised that I do it but once they're fermented they have the lactic acid taste like those dill pickles and they stay crunchy and so they're really yummy that way now I put some turmeric in it and it because they don't taste so much the fact that there's turmeric in it actually makes it taste gives it a flavor you don't have to because the lactic acid will be very flavorful so basically I just I just put them in here okay like that now you might be see like you might be saying oh boy look at that there's some pieces of the grass they're floating that can't be good you're contaminating no no because this is not like canning where you're trying to to kill all the bacteria and this grass here okay this I'm in the garden right now and and I don't put any chemicals in this garden okay nothing zero so this grass here I could probably ferment this grass and eat it right so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of this grass that goes in here and uh, and anyway some of these here is like is chickweed which is which is uh, I eat chickweed anyways <laughs> and I, I never tried fermenting chickweed but uh now the only rules to fermentation is wild uh, lacto uh, fermentation is to of course you don't want to you don't want to contaminate with some really nasty bacteria now I mean if if this was a regular like if this was a farm with cow manure or pesticides and things like that especially like the cow manure I would probably be like kind of worried I wouldn't like I would I wouldn't want to like contaminate it with like E. coli or whatever you know uh, but um, I would clean them I wash them there's um, and you want to have bacteria you want the natural bacteria the lactobacilli which is a family of uh, lactic producing bacteria to be in there okay so let me see okay so there I'm it seems to be not so bad right like you want to try to uh, pack it as much as you can for the simple reason that lacto fermentation um, occurs when there's no oxygen okay now this is why I'm putting in them in water because <laughs> if you don't put them in water uh, you have oxygen and that's not fermentation that's that's rotting now you don't want them to rot okay now I've got them in here mmm this is Himalayan salt now the reason you put salt in there is because salt kills most bacteria but here's the trick salt 
and I'm gonna put, I mean, that much. <laughs> Seems to be like maybe a teaspoon. Okay, there, maybe a bit there. That, now that would be like a teaspoon. Um, the trick with salt is that salt kills most bacteria that would actually be nasty and contaminate this, but it won't kill the lactic, the lactic, uh, the lactobacilli, the family of bacteria that will do the fermentation and produce uh, uh, and and produce the lactic acid, which is what will protect these um, these snake roots. Okay. And um, the, they, they don't mind salt so much. They could take quite a lot of salt without dying. And so what you're doing is you're kind of saying, we're going to create an environment that's going to kill the bad bacteria, but not kill the good bacteria. You don't have to put salt. You could chance it. You could say, I'm chancing it. I'm going to, to let everything grow. And I'm going, to, I'm going to hope that the lactic acid bacteria will take over and win this, you know. <laughs> which they probably would but if you put salt then it's like you're playing it safe now a bit of turmeric in here now a bit of water there's a bit too much water here all right let me uh let me just shake it up a little bit Uh, there is what it looks like. Now, does it need more turmeric? It's all a question of taste, really, you know? Like, I think this will be plenty good because I, I'm going to let this here at room temperature um, on the counter in my house for at least 10 days, you know, maybe like at least 10 days. Uh, room temperature and I'm going to uh, keep the lid just kind of like loose like this so that when it starts to ferment there's going to be some gases are produced uh, and then the, the gases have to come out or else it, it, it gets too much pressure uh, you could you could close it to make to make it even to make sure there's no oxygen and then burp it like once in a while once you, you feel that it gets too much pressure you burp it and then you close it again Okay, so now that's all there is to it really. In 10 days, this thing here will be ready and I, maybe 15 days, you know, I'll taste them. I want them to be very sour. I, I really love the lactic acid tasting and these stay crunchy so it, they're delicious. Okay, now it, it only took me like about like 40 minutes like to dig all of these maybe not even so I'm probably gonna make like maybe three four more of these and then that'll be it for this year and because there's a lot of other things that I could be fermenting that come from the wild so there you go wild edibles and uh, fermenting wild edibles oh one last thing if you now this is my own personal experience these grow everywhere on this property. They grow everywhere in the wild around here, in the ditches, everywhere. They they grow in the shade, as, uh, not like, say, the penumbra, like half shade, okay? But they do better in the full sun. However, they do better when the soil is not so compacted. So, um, this means that you could actually grow grow them in your garden okay you could be gardening these wild edibles so if you find them somewhere in nature you bring back the roots and then you fluff up some some of your garden soil and you put these roots in there in no time flat they will spread because that's what they do these tubers that you see they just they grow and they spread like all over and they just make more and more and more and more they don't require any nutrients they don't require any watering they don't require nothing and if you if it's full sunlight and you have uh, they have fluffy soil 
they will grow big and plentiful okay so you can make yourself a, a bed and be growing these wild edibles rather than trying to find them in uh, in the wild and then maybe they're not so big because it wasn't the perfect conditions or i mean i i know i know how to f i know how to like find them on the property here where they actually will grow big because um i kind of like have dug dug them up so many times that I uh, I could spot what is a good like a safe space <laughs> for them okay so all right there you have it take care folks this is yummy if you haven't had them you can't find this in the stores bye bye